Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of From Start to Part. Based on the feedback I got from a lot of the live streams and comments, I'm starting to do more of these types of videos. And in this video, I'm gonna be making these little guys. Let's call them nubs for right now. I won't tell you exactly what they're for just yet, but I'm gonna make um, probably about four of these using this nice little hunk of aluminum. And this will be the first time that I'm using the tool changer on the Tormox, so that'll be pretty exciting. So let's get a closer look at what these parts are and then we'll start to make some. So here is the part in question. It's relatively small and pretty simple. It's going to take a couple operations just because I have stuff on this surface and then we have to do the contour around this surface. The part is like a one and an eighth inch in this direction, I think it's about one inch in that direction, and the thickness is about 0.75 inch. It's got a 3 8 inch through hole through there, and then I have these dowel pins inserted into the back. These are just for the support of what it attaches to. So I've got a couple of quarter inch dowel holes, and then I believe this is a 1032 tap. Um, so relatively simple here, and what I'm going to be using in terms of stock is some of this bar stock that I got off of eBay. This is just um, 6061, nothing too special here. Um, but the way I'm going to be cutting this out is I'm actually going to be doing, um, let's see, like this. So I'm going to do the contour around the outside. I'll you know lop off the bar, let's say right there, mount this in the vise, do the contour, flip that upside down, shave off the bottom of that, and then flip it up on its side and do the um, features all around there. So it should be pretty easy, but it's gonna be um, you know one operation like that, another one once you flip it upside down, and then the third one like that. So it's gonna be like three total um, setups or operations. So um, let's take a very quick look at the cam and then start cutting this out. Okay, so here is the part in question in SOLIDWORKS. I'm going to breeze through most of this because I already pretty much explained it. So here is what our stock looks like to start. You can see the part kind of hiding inside of there. So we're doing just an adaptive clearing to basically cut out the profile of the part. Then we're going to do a facing just to face it down to the proper height. And then a contour to clean up from the adaptive and then I am pocketing out this center hole. I could drill this out, but I'm just you know, keeping with the same end mill and I'm um, using that, and then a final contour to clean that up. Then when that's done, we're gonna flip it over. Um, this is kind of a representation of the stock, but not really. Uh, we're gonna flip it over and then just face off the bottom. In theory, this would be flipped upside down, and then we're just gonna face it off up high, and then down low. Basically, I'm just doing two different depths of the facing um, because it's quite a bit of material to remove. And then once we're done with that, we're going to set up like this. I'm going to be indicating off the side over here and then in the middle of the vice jaws. That will be my origin. And then I'm just going to pocket out uh, these two. The reason I'm pocketing these instead of drilling them is I want a nice flat bottom for the dowel pin, so I'm just going to use an eighth inch end mill to pocket those out, come back with a contour, clean those up, and then just drilling out this middle hole which will come all the way through. So pretty simple stuff, but we've got one setup, two setups, and three setups. So let's start with the first one. None of these cuts or operations are really all that complicated. I'm starting out with a three-quarter inch shear hog to remove all the material from the outside. That's the uh, adaptive clearing that you saw earlier. And I'm using the shear hog for a number of reasons. One, it sounds really cool. I like the name. And also, it's really good at removing a lot of material, so I figured I'd try that. I'm using multiple depths on this because it can't cut really deep all in one pass, but it can have a really wide uh, width of cut. So I'm just using this at multiple depths. Once I'm done with that, I just do a really quick facing operation with the shear hog. Then I run the tool changer and switch over to a 3 8 inch end mill, which I use for the outer contour. The reason I'm using the 3 8 here is because I need a full three quarter of an inch depth of cut and I'm doing this all in one nice pass. So I use the 3 8 because it has a longer depth of cut or a longer uh, flute length. Then after that is done, I switch over to the trusty quarter inch and I use that to pocket out the center 3 8 inch hole.
Now that the top side is machined, it's time to flip her over and do the bottom side operation, which is basically just taking off that flange or that lip that was left over. Now, a couple um, interesting things about indicating this. So if you looked at the cam, you saw that I was actually using the bottom of the part as my Z0 reference or my origin. The reason I'm doing this is because the stock size is kind of variable. It's not really machined perfectly flat. So I want to reference off of the perfectly flat machine side of it, not the top side. If I reference off the top side and just cut down, each one is going to be slightly different. So what I want to do is indicate off of the bottom, which is the parallels. So I'm putting a one, two, three block on top of the parallels, indicating off of that, you know, doing the math to subtract out the height of the parallels, and that gives me the bottom of the part. Therefore, when I shave off the top, I'm always shaving it down the exact same way and leaving it the exact height that I want because it's based on the bottom of the part, which is the parallels. And of course, I'm just using the shear hog again to do two paths um, or two passes over top of it, and that cuts it down and leaves me with a nice little finished part. Here is what the nubs look like at this point. Um, you can see the finishes pretty decent on them. I only have three of them in front of me right here. The fourth one is over on the uh, mill getting ready for the final operation. So all that's left to do is to pocket out the two dowel pin holes and then drill and tap the 1032 in the center. And so there you have it. The nice thing about doing the pocketing with an end mill is you get a really, really clean fit. You can kind of dial it in just right, so there's like no real wiggle room in here. Of course, you could do this with a drill and a reamer if you wanted it that precise, but you know, using the end mill is also an option. So pretty cool. Let's finish these off. I just recently got one of these um, Heimer tasters. This is a um, it's just a probe for indicating in all three axes. So you got the um, Y, you've got the X, and then it plunges for the Z. And basically you plunge it down until you he see zero, zero, and that will be your zero. Of course, you have to indicate this in your um, offsets, things like that, but it's um, so far been pretty easy to use. So I've already indicated um, on the previous part the zero here, and I've indicated in between the jaws, and this will remain the same for every single part. When I swap out each one of these nubs, I just need to indicate off of the side. But let me indicate the Z just to kind of show you what that looks like. So we're just going to move it roughly into the center, and I'm just going to move it down slowly. Move it a little bit more towards the center. And let me point this a little bit more towards the camera. And then we're just going to slowly jog down. And boom, that is our zero. So it's really that simple to use. And then I can just move it back up, move it over a little bit, and then do the same thing on this side to indicate the zero position in the X. And there you go, that is the zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and click zero. And that part is indicated. Now I would do the exact same thing for the Y axis to where I indicate off of this, mark it zero then indicate off of this and do divide by two, and then it will move the center point to halfway in between those. So it's pretty easy stuff. There's really not a whole lot to talk about with the machining. I just used the uh, eighth inch end mill, plunged that down in with the contour, then came back and cleaned that up and then use the tool changer to switch over to the drill. It's a number 21 drill, which is used for a 1032 tap and drilling out that hole. Pretty easy stuff.
Here are the finished four nubs, all tapped and drilled and everything else. I just used a standard, um, well, I guess it's not that standard. Um, this is one of these spiral flute taps. Um, I really, really like these. They go in so much easier. I get these just from Tormach, but it's just YG brand. You can get these on Amazon too. Makes it really, really easy to tap. I just did all that off camera. Um, but here they are, and the dowel pins fit nice and snug. I'm going to need probably an arbor press to get them all the way in there and they don't come out too readily. A nice little snap when they pop out, so that's good. So the dowels fit nice and clean. The threading is nice and simple as well. So yeah, everything turned out. The finish looks decent and these will work for what I need. So hopefully another start to part. This gives you a little bit better idea of what it takes to start from a solid block of material and end up with a really finished part that looks really cool and works out. So as always, thanks for watching and you can check me out on Facebook for any updates on my channel or you can also check out the link below that links to Amazon. If you use that link and shop on Amazon, you can help give a kickback to my channel and help support more videos like this. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time.